Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. And so I decided to grab the Pixel 4a and charge it up and boot it on. Um, once a month, I go through all the devices that I have and I check the uh, battery percentages on them and top them up. But anyways, while I was uh, charging it up, I decided to go ahead and update the uh, software since there was a software update waiting for it. And I was like, I haven't made a video on the Pixel 4a in a while. And I was like, man, this is a forgotten phone. And so here we are. We're going to be talking about the Pixel 4a, also known to Google as uh, its uh, project name Sunfish. This phone literally is awesome. When it came out, it was hitting a lot of the checkboxes. Um, there are a couple of things that are kind of a letdown, and I'll go over those here in a little bit. Uh, for the spec heads out there, as a reminder, this device had the Snapdragon 730G clocked at 2.2 gigahertz. Uh, we had a 5.8 inch display with a resolution of 1080 by 2340, 443 DPI, uh, 6 gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of internal storage. Uh, it is currently running Android 13 right now. And... Um, yeah, it pretty much has the same camera sensors from from past uh, pixels, so it takes pretty good you know photos. This device came out two months before the Pixel Five and Four A Five G launched. Uh, very similar in size to the Pixel Five. That's why I have it here. Just you know, comparison. So a bit more narrow than the Pixel Five, but about the same height. Um, of course, build build quality polycarbonate. Um, you know, it's I mean. It's Google's mid-ranger. It was a follow-up to the Pixel 3a and the most anticipated device uh, to kind of let everybody know that the A-series devices were here to stay. Well, once this device launched, it was just like, boom, yeah, we got confirmation. We're going to get more A-series devices. And the ones to come afterwards, the Pixel 5a and the Pixel 6a, um, have just really gotten like, improved and gave more in uh, the benefits and, and um, features that the uh, mid-range device from Google would get over time uh this one was slightly smaller than the pixel 3a so it was more compact you saw that 5.8 5.8 inch display but it was a bit compact um so for those who like smaller phones this was pretty much right up your alley uh takes great photos you get that that awesome pixel experience um i do have some theories here and i'll go over that so please uh stick around with this video smash the like button so it reaches more people but if you want to know what my theories are, uh, you want to stay through all the way through this video so you can hear them towards the end. But, you know, going back to the Pixel 4a, in total and all, I mean, it was hitting every every mark. You know, it was very smooth. You didn't really feel like that this was a mid-range device. I mean, this was one of those things that really catapulted this device. It had a lot of people buzzing about it was just how fluid the uh, experience was with the software and, and all that. Of course, it had the headphone jack, so you could plug wired headphones into it. You can plug it into your auxiliary line in your vehicle. If you have an older vehicle that doesn't have Bluetooth connectivity, there is a way for you to get your media to your stereo deck in your car so you can play your favorite music. And like I said, you know, it's a Pixel device, so it was running the Sony IMX363 camera sensor, which uh, basically Google had mastered its uh, pairing with their computational photography and software. Now for my theories on this, because uh, this would have like been 100% best uh, mid-range device. It was, I mean, I would consider it that, but most people didn't. But it would have been. Considering the fact that when MKBHD stated that the Pixel 5 was supposed to get the Tensor G1, makes me think that it could have been a possibility that they would have thrown the 765G chip into Pixel 4a, making it... 5g capable because that is one of its downsides it's not future proof to connect to the 5g network because the 730g chip along with its modem uh does not pick up any of the 5g bands now, you imagine if this device did i mean the battery was well optimized so you know you would have probably had a similar battery experience as the pixel 5 that's pretty solid um but that's like one of my theories on it you know it, it could have been maybe not maybe the 4a 5g would have been the 5g one and bigger model and it would have stayed the same who knows but in my opinion, this device does very well. Um, as you can even see on LTE with on Verizon's network, it does pretty solid. 131 down for me is good in my area where I live, and 30 on the uplink is pretty decent. And um, 
yeah, the latency is not, not too bad for what is around my city. Your city may be better. You know, on top of everything here, what I use this device for now, I've made this device my camcorder to record videos and a vlog, as well as my media player, like a Pixel player, like how Apple has an iPod. But I just wanted to give some acknowledgement back to the Pixel 4a. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are in the comment section. Smash the like button. Thanks for checking this out. And as always, law.